what the compromise is, what you're missing, what you think you may want, etc. Or a query. Be clear. That's what this is all about. And I want that signing. Not for me to check and say you signed it, I may do. It's for you to commit yourself and say, well, if I'm signing that, I'll just go around the truck again. Did you put that so and so on? No, we didn't. Thanks, Tomas. I'm just about to sign this. You need not be bollocking. If you're asking them questions and doing that, suddenly you put something critical on board, and that's it. Again, this is his invisible peril I'm looking at. All the invisible bits that contribute to like, on that occasion when you get to I, I'm doing with that. Why did he. We had all the scenarios, but what, we could have a scenario. Why did he fall? He lost his shunt. When did he lose that? Three months, one, three months prior to the job. Did anyone know? Yes, his foreman did. How did you get by? Well, we blagged it. Don't need that, do we? Well, it's basically for you and for the clients who knows who, who, who's looking at roles and responsibilities. Just to contact Sue if you need to. It's mainly Sue, but Sean would, you know, Corby. You'd have a handful of roles, wouldn't you? From the seniors to deputies to the uh, to the mates to the guardian. You'd have a bag full of responsibilities. It wouldn't just be one man, the guardian. He'd like gaffer the job out. It's like Mark can easily be a guardian. Yeah, we bring contacts and phone numbers on it. So does the client need this, or somebody on site need this, other than yourself knowing that it's the reason why you got phone number, It's like the permit holder or the guardian. Something kicks off on site, the Guardian used to do, and I'll go to the Guardian because the Guardian looks after the, the, the uh, safety pack. Well, that's how I'm thinking he should because he controls all what kicks off on site. And the control room should have his number, and he says, You better get outside the chimney, lads. There's a gas leak, or the fiber gauge is turned up. And he's the one like, he's central contact. Didn't need to be formal, he just needs to be clear yeah. and competent. And that's where these numbers come from. They don't always get filled in, they get filled in where they're relevant and pertinent. And again, we'll look at this down line and see how many were filled in. Because every other one. But the client would have this, and it's not reasonable for the client to have your phone number on site, like Carillion. Like there's a bomb square, scare, or our key that just suddenly <laughs> broke in the fence. Well, Carillion, actually, when you sign in, you have to give your number anyway. Yeah. Right, there you go then. You sign your phone number in there, don't you? Oh, dear. Oh, yeah. okay. I didn't know that. So that's really the same crap, isn't it? Yeah. From that. Right, anyway, stage two, mapping the job. Stage two, mapping the job. <laughs> the objective is to arrive at site with correct documentation and equipment and with a thorough knowledge of what is required. Or reasonable knowledge, perhaps, I don't know, maybe that needs qualifying. But anyway, it's basically confirmed how you left the yard. Yes, make sure you've done stage one. Is how you turn up on site. How do you achieve this? Walk the job. This is the first operations when you're arriving on site. Along with a site induction, you may not get to the job before you do the induction, obviously. Depends where you're at. Walk the job and match it with the documentation. And that's when you ring in and say, who looks at this job? Remember, because you have rigging equipment, you will have access to places the original surveyor did not always have. And so you may be providing critical information and measurements and the other details. You may therefore be mapping, mapping without some information. Again, that's what you do anyway. I'm trying to get this variability out. Make sure you provide all critical details to the office in good time. This is a key objective one. You go on it on us, I'll go on it on you. Day, day three, day four job. Get, get some bolts in. Can you, can you tell me that when you got there? Your side of the deal. <laughs> we need something from you. You tell us in good time. And we're not dashing it down to you. Sometimes that's just going to come. Anyway. Yeah, just anyway. I've, I've been on the job. Yeah. We've, we've done about chimneys before and then the bloke said, I've said to the bloke, yeah, you, you bought nuts and bolts on, I can make. Well, I'll tell you what, I'll have a word with our gaffer so you get some yeah, that's, bang that's, them in. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, if the, if the original job is to change bolts, well, you'll tell them. Yeah, so and we go to you, get the we need the size of the bolts, that's the first job. You don't paint the round cage, you don't fit the forest, you don't do the gas wall, then take the flanges off and throw in the bolt sizes. No, of course you would. First off, there is bolt. Take the flange off and get idea uh, bolt size, even if you haven't done the rest of them yet. At least we can get the bolt sizes in, you know. Yeah. yeah. Things will occur anyway. Etc. Before you start, check the following. You're in possession of sound safety critical equipment necessary to take the job safely. Again, this is confirming what happened in the yard. You have all the necessary documentation, you have su sufficient materials for the job. The time scale for the job is achievable. 
no snorting. It varies. Some are tight, some aren't. Yeah. You have good days and bad. Stay straight, occupying the site. This is critical. Half a look at trucks and you're missing your signboards. How can you occupy sites if you're missing your signboards? That's the first thing you need. For people to know you're there and you're there above. Because people go out the doorway, they don't know if something's going to come down and open on their head. Right, assess the job at planning stage. Well, that's down to us. We'd like to give you a brief up. And basically, it's bunting up until we say different. Yeah. Castle Rock was different. You put Harris down. That started for bunting. We realised what the rock, there was lots of rock coming down. We converted it to our barrier to make sure no one was in that area. That job dictated itself. Nothing wrong with that. But that's really when we do our barrier and we did sum up the uh, pavement, didn't we? Yeah. yeah. So, stuff like that. It's mainly when you're mixing it with public. That's where you're starting to go hard. Your bunting yeah, may not be good enough. You may have to get someone around off, off the pavement and back on the pavement down the line. Normally we work within a site boundary and that's where you start doing the, the bunting. Assess the area and read the method statement. Risk assessments, any other documentation associated with the job. If you do anyway, but again, it's doing it in a formal way. Basically, because you're going to occupy that site. It's our site to control. So, you do that anyway, but it's formal, because end date, that site's under our control because we're liable for what goes off. If we're liable for actions on site, then it's our right to say, I want this area. I don't want to hurt anybody. And if there's a dispute, then there is. Again, sure room. There's an area, the other side of the staircase, that we didn't have that natural room fence. <coughs> they built that tunnel. You know, stuff like that, that's mapping. That's pure mapping the job. And if they didn't build a tunnel, my argument would be, what well, was down to you? You used to evacuated the area. Because, <coughs> you know, it was either that, or you pay me to put the tunnel to scap them up. It's in my instruction. Because my method statement says you use the ring fence, there will be an issue. Are you, are you going to close that doorway off, or are you going to protect it? And they had the choice, and they protected it. So, and that's it. But our occupation there was a natural ring fence there. These are job packs at the minute. So far, a more, it'll just look a more like a risk assessment than an actual job pack, doesn't it? It's steered away from the actual job in hand at the moment. Right. It just seem a bit vague. Yeah, that's time. what Shag was on about. There's not enough what works to be carried out. If they're quite vague, if not nothing at all. Second you just page, get mate. What, the method statement part of it? Um, all it's, too much, well, there's, it's all method statement risk assessment. It's just the actual works to be carried out. It's not... The specific works. Well, we'll get to that. There's nothing... So we'll go through it. It seems to have gone a bit vague since we've got to judge that. I would argue that, because we went to basic spec site specs and then we moved on to safe systems. Yeah, I mean, I'm on that really basic stuff as well, like what building you're working on, stuff like that. Sometimes because all that well, will sort of like determine what you do after that. Knowing what you're going to do determines how you're going to do it. It's as simple as. So, for the second page, what are you going to do? This is what we're here to do, and everything leads on from that. Well, like I said, I reckon we could move the brief yeah. onto the front page. And then you've got everything, then you've got all your contacts. Brief description of what you're going to be doing, and then you can get to your method statement, risk assessments yeah. for the yeah. more detailed stuff. Is there any room, is there? I can make room. Right. It's got to be a little bit more. That's probably the same. It's right? got to be a little bit more than just LC works, you know what I mean? Yeah, it would be. Yeah, how many tapes and blah blah blah. blah. Where? Yeah. Why? That's not that's 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 that. perfect. I'm trying to uh, make. Oh no, sorry, that's uh, that's for Nick. I'm trying to make this. All right, go on. Top document. So everything's readable, everything's signed off on the top page, you're not flicking pages. I'm listening to it, but the reason why I did everything on that top sheet was so I could read signatures in one here. Oh, not have you flick through pages. It just sounds so I know yeah. it should be a bit nearer. I'm trying to make it simple to use. And not have you been doing clerical stuff. Just that I thought works to be carried out for second page was dead. Thanks, Kev. Thanks, Kev. It was dead straight forward. I thought that would work. Yeah. Work for me anyway. Oh. That's to be worked on. Turn day. You still got to click I, the next page to get to I keep tools. repeating this. Don't go missing that. I've gone through this. I've gone through this for a particular reason. I've gone through it for health and safety reasons. I've gone through it to comply with law. Yeah. Now it's workability. And that's where you come back to me. 
bear in mind, these are safety documents. So that's the key thing about them. Yeah. They, they tell you, so I can't compromise on the safety bit. It doesn't mean you cannot rearrange to make it easier to use. You make it easier to use, it's contributing to safety. And I'm all for easy use. If you make it complicated to use, you're adding to the dangers. Pitch and occupy the site. Upon arrival to site, receive site induction if applicable, where you may learn about processes and controls. Make sure that you have the CHR job pack with you at induction so you can compare notes and ask questions. In the absence of any induction, ask questions. You do anyway, like I said, it's formalisation and making sure there's no availability. Then the other thing is about asking fast passage register any hazards, an FOD in particular. Seems right, right, we're going to eventually go online and put the building on. Does everybody know what FOD stands for? Oh. For an object damage. That's it, which is a piece of paper. Yeah. Right. Third party protection. Gain confirmation the client supervising officer has informed the affected people, including blind people, of our attendance, <laughs> unless this is our job to do so. Yeah. Ensure before leaving the yard you have an adequate number of legible signs on the truck, including those with rail. Engage people in the area, oh, well, I'll carry on. Oh, in the working area, where it is appropriate to do so, i.e., let us all know. Again, I like, mean, that bloke working on the door, did he let you know? Yeah. That's it, you're engaging. I'm working with you, mate. Anyway, yeah, yeah, yeah. confirm the drop zone area, that was determined while mapping the job stage due before arranging a recording. Basically, just make sure no one's going to get hurt, third parties. Only lift items to height which need to be there. Never store sheet materials at height during the night or overnight. During the shift or overnight. I say during the shift, sometimes you, you chain it in. But upstairs for sheet materials is not a storage area. You take all materials back and cover it, and this is all percent <coughs> boys, and don't tell me this is always at 100%, because it's on. You retain all materials and you tie them, bucket covers, or some other secure means. I think we have. So don't firstly, stones. Stones. don't, don't take it up there if you don't need to be up there. If it's up there, make sure it doesn't come down unless you intend it to. And in the control way, of course. Yeah. Well, Ensure that the cord <laughs> Ensure that the cord is maintained <laughs> at, and the doorways are secured. So you need to secure doorways. Ensure that if manning is part of the arrangement, that the person remains on station. That person may also be the gate guardian. Check the cordon, cordon, excuse me, cordon on a daily basis. If the cordon needs to be removed that night and signs taken away or, do or doorways freed, ensure that this occurs. Just bear in mind that doorway might be fire route at night. And you just lashed it up. If the job runs over, ensure that client's SO has communicated this to all parties. So, well, so, 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 Objective. Now this is like when you're climbing, what's first foot access? It's climbing ladders. Jay does lots of it when he goes onto a, onto a roof repeatedly. We always do it safely. It's with awareness basically. Where we were, somebody, or more than one of you, their first feet onto that roof, start rigging. Sometimes first foot access is the workstation, i.e. on the roof when you're dressing the conductor. And stuff like that. Yeah, there's times where you may not be protected, so if you're not protected with a continual anchor, this is what this is about. To gain safe initial access in order to perform a minor task or creating a safe primary access route to the workplace, oh, sorry, place of work in order to establish installation of access equipment. As a death or injury as a result of falling. Controls, always use continual anchor where passive protection is not provided. Passive protection is full protection, rails, and rails, wall, Something you don't need to contribute to, you don't need to build in, it's there to protect you. Yeah. This, this wall is passive. It's out there where you know, 
you don't need to do anything for yourself. Can, 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 you know, can I send you to that later? <coughs> something you do for yourself or something built in. Only trained operatives, I should say, comp competently trained or competent operatives to carry out this task. I.e., youth is first day at work, doesn't do that. You don't send him up, you do, you've got the awareness, you've got the heads up. Try to make sure you are, you are balanced and have full control of your body. Again, it's situation awareness. He may be stupid to up, up the. Trying to use brute end date, he went down an hole. Be continual alerts to slips, trips, falls, environments, wind, windy destabilisation if it's a windy day. Be four metres in, not two metres in. If you're on the mecha deck roof, two metres off the edge. <coughs> And it's windy, you can get lifted over quite easily. You need to be four metres up if you need to be there at all. It's your judgment. Protrusions, you have your head down, there's always a beam there. <laughs> other malicious, oh sorry, other processes including the neighbouring property. What you're working on might be affected by the output from the neighbouring property. Malicious interference, this is his locked door syndrome, really, isn't it? You know, it's not unlike kids to think it's funny to like. Put little boob traps anyway. And again, this pirate radio stuff, isn't it? That's, you have to have your eyes open for that. Deposits, ID, water, and algae. Green, green stuff on roofs. A uh, elastomate roof is safe enough, so you put some algae on or ice. And then it's a skating rink instantly, isn't it? Ensure you maintain a safe position and effective escape. Continue judge, let's continue withdrawal. Always avail yourself with measures for security. Ensure your continual access to continual communication. <clears throat> Remain focused and make rational judgments. Always assess the situation in front of yourself. Be aware of signs, signals which help help any possible danger. Always follow the body body systems. Two heads are better than one. Unless you survey the city west. Turn over, sorry, 20 lights. Buddy Buddy System. When I introduced, introduced this a while ago, it was a foreign language. Are you getting the idea what I mean by it now? Yeah, it's working. Yeah. And I'll get onto this. This is key to situation awareness. Situation awareness, I'll go through it because it's the back of this. I'll give you a brief intro. You get into your own bubble. You convince yourself you're all right. You don't need this for 20 years, nothing's going to change. I'm, I'm okay, I'm in the comfort zone, I'm comfortable, I'm happy, I'm sorted. You're in your bubble. The bloke on the look in the outside sees it differently. You're in your bubble, you look through your bubble to someone else and realise you're both doing it the same way. Look at someone else, gives you the heads up and gives you the opportunity on the other bloke. Doesn't mean now you're better than him, it just means you've got a separate pair of eyes. Looking out, looking in is to completely look different to looking out. Others are like that. You go down the road, right, do you see that bloke with, his, with that cap on, 100 metres up the road? Hey, you know that. It's like, you go down that road, you're unconscious, aren't you? And you're operating, what, perhaps 30% of you with your heads up, you're in the comfort zone. And you're like that when you're working, you in a lethal environment. It's unreasonable to expect someone to be switched on 100% of the time. It's not humanly possible. Constant monitoring, which leads to positive and thorough safety culture. This is what we do in the office. Basically, we like choose the means. Is it mutes, jack ladders, scaffold? The times when mute and jack ladders cross over, we may say it's more viable because, excuse me, because the mute occupies a lot of space. You swing around, you go to the line, the big boomers in the school playground, and you don't want to that way, sling them over where you've got kids possibly. It's more viable for you to punch ladders up. It's an assessment though, because there are times where we look at this and think, it's a new bachelor, and that's it, and that's what we arrive at. And you'll find what we do today, we won't do next year, and if you think about what we do today, and it's always what we did 10 years ago. We never used the mute 10 years ago, did we? Now we do it more regularly, and we will more, incre more increasingly. If it's safe to introduce a mute on site, it's a heavy piece of kit, it moves. And I would say, 
HSC want the nuke first off. Now, specialists like us say that's not viable. No, I listen to the idea. Saying, well, we we clean gutters on the site. You bunch your ladder, uh, lead to ladder up. That's safer than using a, a tower because the tower can go over the ladder. You can anchor it it's safer and make it secure that area. You can yeah. also anchor the tower. Yeah. If you need. We assess this from the test scout. The HSC like is hierarchical. Choose one, choose the other, choose the other, and if you've got to climb. So. We're picking up on. I'm just uh, wondering what the. You got yes, no, part, or not applicable. Not applicable. What do you mean by part? Well, part might be if you've got part of the anvil, for instance. Mick Fuller, who part trained you on the SSSTS, designed this. And believe me, this is a rationalisation of what he did, because he had lots of repeated questions in it, and the HSC like it. So therefore, I've adopted it. I've now rationalised it, but it's still there. It is law that you assess what's on site. That's law. You know, is, a, is the means viable? Are you young men doing like monkey climbs when really there's a safe way of doing it? Now we can say, well, monkey climbs in a safe sort of way. And I'm saying that often that is the case. It is safe to use an industrial climber. Then introduce import equipment and scaffolds and what you. But obviously this will be done before we attend site though, won't it? This is purely us. But you look at it and think, yeah, I saw him he's all thinking, I think he's 100% wrong, you know. Yeah, I say so. So you look, you look at that. You, you say, get a say, kid, because you're doing it. He said, I think I'm on mute on this. Or, like, what, what Chris did down at Shrewsbury School, where we used the mute for initial access, because the roofs are like flipping the Alps. So it was a mixture of means. Here we did, was it, 40% mute and rest climb? What was I that don't know, I can't remember. Yeah, salt light to there. But you know, it was a mixture. Yeah. This is anchoring. This is key. You all got testers on the on board. What you should be carrying is anchors, you know, with your arm plug. So if you've got an opportunity to like punch your eye in and leave it there, then use it. There's times you can't I and mean, you have to go through, and this is where the abseiders blag it. Because I was in on when we wrote this document, the abseiders. And it was like, they said bomb proof. So what do you mean by that? It was like an assessing, a tank room, you know, bomb proof. You might actually literally bomb proof, you know, they fall to bits when you pull bomb against it. It's something solid. It's an assessment. The problem with assessments, I caught a tiny one, hanging off a flipping bent pipe on a flipping stent pipe. <laughs> and it was bent into the asphalt, it didn't go through. I was thinking, and it was only the, the fact that you had a grip over that power feeling, well, you've got to consider what bomb proof is. You've got to use your own intelligence and you've got to think this is legal and you've got to defend this in court. So make sure we're anchored. So it's counterweights, bomb proof attachment around, or drill fix. And to my mind, if you want to put 20 drill fixes in because you're happy, put 20 drill fixes in because you're happy. Safety's got legal ruling over everything, except you won't go down to St Paul's Cathedral and blow its holes holes in it, needlessly. If you need to, you have to. And that's what it's about. You know, if you need to, you have to. And then you think through how you're going to arrive at it. <coughs> but I'm saying you've got the testers, take the anchors, because then they, in our trade, if your anchor goes, you go. Obviously. Mm -hmm. Situation awareness is being aware of where you are at this particular time. I'll read it through. We've been on a training course myself in here, and I said now they've gone around the sea projects, facing us doing it, basically, through the Federation. Because mm. they've gone this year against sea projects. And I say, guess who's the lucky one? Situation awareness, I put our essay, Rob did that, so we didn't have to keep writing. It's a perception of environment. And environmental elements within a volume of, of time and space. The comprehension of their meaning and the projection of their risk status in the near future. Situation awareness involves being aware of what is happening around you to understand how information, events and your own actions will impact, impact on your goals and your objectives, both now and in the near future. Lacking situation awareness or having inadequate SA situation awareness has been identified as one of the primary factors in accidents attributed to human error 
therefore situation awareness is critical in the steeplejack industry where the information flow can be very high and a poor decision may lead to fatal consequences. <coughs> the quotes for knowing goodness for good situation awareness are know the job, pre-plan all activities, this one again at, yeah. in the yard, know what the job is before you get your wheels rolling. Know your roles and responsibilities, we skip that, it's like what your role is within the gang. Be clear on your actions before you begin. Be prepared mentally, with skill, with resource. Be clear how all instructions relate to the job and your role within the job. Consequence of loss. loss. When we lose the bubble, i.e. situation awareness, we increase potential for human error and mishaps. Situation awareness and team performance. Effective team situation awareness depends on team members developing accurate expectations for team performance by drawing on common knowledge basis. This concept is, known, is, ma is maintaining a shared mental model. Really, I'm talking about buddy-buddy and toolbox talking. <laughs>